guys, it's Sam and welcome to this get ready with me setup. I feel very like old school YouTube right now because I have my like bed in the background kind of. I feel like I should have like a Bath and Body Works candle, which I almost did. And I was like, don't be that basic, but I might in the future. I also feel like I need better like window treatments to be like really doing this the legitimate way, but I don't care. I just recently moved in as many of you know, and this is where my makeup area vanity is. So I figured I'd do this in my bedroom because why not? So you may continue to see this evolve as I do other like personal videos because I don't want to do my personal videos in front of my bookshelves like my other videos. So I think I'm going to have to work something out like in here um, continuing. So we'll see how this goes. So this video is going to be about minimalism and decluttering and my moving recently because I moved twice this year and the decluttering process for that and like downsizing and all that stuff. And this was a topic that was voted on by my Patreon supporters. So every month on Patreon, my supporters get to vote in a poll of a video that I'll do either on this channel or my other channel. They get to vote on a video topic and I do that. And coming up for next month, since it's gonna be Vlogmas, I'll be doing a video every day leading up to Christmas on this channel or my other channel, you'll get a video from me on one of the channels every day. So for the month coming up, my Patreon supporters get to vote on a ton of topics and actually select multiple that they want me to do for Vlogmas. So if you want to get in on that Vlogmas action, I will link my Patreon on the screen. So I figured out multitask today and that's why I'm doing Get Ready With Me and a chat about this because it's Sunday night and like the only time that I have to film is right now and I figured I want to spend my time getting ready but also filming at the same time so I can get multiple things done because man I do not have a ton of time right now like I always feel <laughs> as though eventually I'll start having more time but I just don't think that that's true like I think I've just reached a point in my life where I'm always going to be super busy and have like a really busy schedule and I, I don't know how I feel about that. I would like a little bit more free time, but obviously if I had more free time, I'd probably be just feeling it with shit anyway. So this is just what adults do, I feel like. So starting on like the downsizing minimalism thing, I just kind of want to talk about like, I feel like how a lot of us get there or get to a point where we feel like we have to downsize. So I feel like it's not until you first move out of your parents' house for the first time and move into like a real apartment, not like a college apartment, because I feel like that's different and you usually have like dorm stuff that kind of follows you into like a college apartment. A lot of college apartments are like pre-furnished, so I feel like that doesn't really count. But when you first are moving out into your apartment that you have to furnish, that's when you really realize like how long it's taken your parents to get all the stuff that they have in their home. Like the little things that you might have not realized how much time and money it took as far as like decorating and furniture and all this stuff and like wall coverings and just stuff that people accumulate over like 40 and 50 years of their lives. So when I first moved out to like a brand new apartment that didn't have anything because one of my first places was a shared house. So it was already furnished. So when I first moved into an apartment, it was in Philly with my best friend Amanda, who's been on my channel before. And we didn't have anything because we moved across the country in my Volkswagen Beetle when we were like, well, I was like 22, 22 or 23, I want to say. So we didn't have anything. And we literally survived on, like, our furniture was boxes for a very long time, and we just didn't have anything. And I feel like that's when I started to kind of just be like, I want stuff to, like, fill this place up. And the place that we lived in was really junky, so we didn't have anything nice. I slept on an air mattress for a long time. Like, it just, I didn't have anything of value, and it just wasn't a very good feeling, like, living in, like... It was like, I mean, borderline poverty at the time. We could afford things, but it was it was cutting it very, very tight. So um, that was difficult. There was a time when we were looking into like food stamps and stuff like that, but that didn't last very long. And eventually as um, life and stuff progressed, I eventually moved into a bigger house and that I was sharing with a roommate at the time. And then eventually was just sharing with my um, ex-partner. So that was a three bedroom house with a living room and a den and a kitchen and a garage. And during that time is when I feel like 
things started to accumulate because when we first moved in there, there wasn't enough furniture to fill all the rooms. And when you're living in a house, you're like, I need to fill all of this space because we're all used to living in like really full homes. And the thing is that I've realized is that the more house and the more space that you have, the more stuff you're going to have because we just feel like we need to fill all of the things. So if you have three bedrooms and you don't need them, you're still going to fill them with crap. And that's exactly what I did. For the longest time, I thought that I would always need to have an office because I needed that space. And now I don't think that that's true, although it would be nice to have like a separate room that I could pull my books and stuff in and whatever. I'm getting along just fine here where my books are in my living room and I'm having to film this in my like bedroom. Like that's fine. So I don't know where the shift happened. I think right before the move from the house into the two bedroom apartment that I was just in, it was kind of like a do or die moment where it's like, there's all this shit. We need to get rid of a lot of it. Selling a lot of it for moving costs was helpful. And just there, we don't need all this crap. So that was when the whole decluttering process started. And one of the tips that I have, because this is kind of like a combination chatty story time, my experience, but also like a tip video, is it's very helpful to have a deadline. And it's very helpful to have something that's making you do this. And I know that's not the situation for everyone. Like you're not always going to be moving, but my big downsizing so far has been around moves and that's helpful because it's like you just need to do it and it also puts in perspective of like do you want to move this do you want to pay extra to move this and that's why there are like some tips to actually like um when you're decluttering to pack your stuff up as if you are moving and then only take out the things that you need and then you realize after like a month or two months or however long you do this that like the stuff that's still in the boxes is stuff that you don't actually use. People also do that with moving where like you only unpack the stuff that you need when you move and then you realize the stuff that you haven't taken out unless it's like a seasonal item is stuff that you don't need. So that can be really helpful but just having a deadline or even imagining a deadline to, for yourself like when you're going through stuff and being like if the next time that I move, because generally speaking, everyone's going to move at some point, <laughs> be like, do I really, will I want to take this with me? Will I want to pay the money for this? Is this, if depending on what kind of like decluttering method you're following, does this spark joy? Does this bring me happiness? Is this useful to me? Would someone else get more use out of this? Those are the kinds of like questions you can ask. But again, having some kind of deadline can be really helpful. And that can be something where you can even pull in a friend or a loved one and be like, hey, I need to do this and help me think of something as far as a deadline for myself. Like at the end of this, if I haven't decluttered this, I give you 20 bucks or like whatever it is. So any of those like outside external motivators, especially if you're really resistant to decluttering, I think can be super helpful because otherwise you're just like always thinking about doing it and not actually doing it. So moving tends to be a big motivator, I think, for a lot of people. So at this point, I've now done two downsizing type moves. So I moved from a, like I said, three bedroom house into a two bedroom apartment that also had a den. And then from there, I've moved into a one bedroom apartment. And I could even actually go smaller. There's like a living room, dining room combination area. It's like a flowing open concept type thing. And I don't really need the dining room space because I don't need a dining room. My kitchen has like a breakfast nook that I eat at, like a counter. So... I could even go smaller than this, um, so that is something that I actually looked into. I wanted to get just like an efficiency or like a studio, but all the studios around here are one, hard to find, and two, almost as expensive, like only 10 bucks cheaper or sometimes more expensive than a one bedroom. So why wouldn't I just get the one bedroom and make my life like slightly easier even though I don't need it, need it, but why wouldn't I just do that? But between these two moves, I've also realized that I like not having as much clutter. I am somebody who will clutter things up. Like I, I'm not like a dirty person. I don't have like trash or food or like, you know, half eaten thing. Like I'm not one of those like clutter people, but I am very much somebody that will like stack things, stack papers, stack knickknacks. Like if something doesn't have a place, it's very hard for me to find a place for it. So actually having less stuff and having less like space to put things on is helpful for me when keeping things to a minimum and keeping things clean and like orderly because when I'm stressed out I'll just put something somewhere and then continue to be stressed out and like stuff will start to accumulate and then I don't have the time or the bandwidth to go through and like declutter all of it. So 
that is something that I've realized about myself in the time that I have been really like doing the declutter thing hard. So one of my biggest tips is to find a method that works for you and that speaks to you. So there are so many decluttering methods and you can go down just a rabbit hole on YouTube about decluttering and there are like so many. Obviously the really popular one that a lot of people do is the KonMari method where you declutter things by category. I find that really helpful for some things but I've never done a full KonMari sweep all in one go kind of thing. Um, but I have, I usually will try to do things by category or even by like space. And I find that really helpful. And taking everything out of its home and looking at it helps with the sentimentality piece. So I asked you guys on Twitter if there's anything that you wanted me to kind of touch on. And I know some people also with even book hauls have asked me as far as unhauling, how to get over that like sentimentality of an item. And it helps to take it out of its home. So whether that's decluttering books or decluttering makeup or decluttering clothing or whatever, if you take it out of where it is, your brain for some reason is more able to kind of see it as like the separate thing that you can then determine if you like this item really or not, or if you're just used to seeing it in that space or taking it out of that space in your brain, like your brain's resistant to it. If you just take it out in one fell swoop, it is much easier, I promise. Even though there's a lot of stuff, that's why sometimes I just do things you know, by section or by category or whatever, instead of doing it like all at once, like the KonMari method or whatever. But that kind of method I found really helpful. But I also combined that with other methods and like making things into a game. So the minimalists have a like decluttering minimalism game where every day you declutter an item and that gets more and more every day. So on day one, you declutter one thing. On day two, you declutter two things. Day three, three things. All the way up until 30 days, 31 days, 29 days, however many days are in that month. And that's a little game that a lot of people do as far as like decluttering. I find that really helpful as well. So I would do kind of a combination of that. Like on the weekends, if I had a lot of time um, or I was feeling really motivated one day or whatever, I would do like a big chunk of things. But on the other days when I just had like a lot of work stuff and I wasn't going to be home a lot, I would just do like the little like minimalism decluttering game where I only need to do like a few things. And then you, it's really pretty easy at the beginning to kind of figure out things that you need to declutter and you can probably rush through a ton of things at that time. Towards the end is when it starts to get a little harder, but that's when you're really getting rid of the things that probably need to be getting rid of anyway that you just have some like sentimental attachment to. A big tip too is to resist the urge to buy stuff just to organize things because then you're just getting more stuff. I also have found that I really resent now having to buy an item just for a particular space. Since I'm a renter, this might not apply to everybody, but as a renter, I don't want to buy something that just works for like this space. Like that's why right now I'm not fully unpacked, I feel like for this place, because I don't want to buy some organizational things just for this place because I don't think this place is going to be a very, very long-term place. I might be here a year, I might be here a little longer, but I think it's going to be closer to about a year, which is fine. And I don't want to buy like a microwave stand, for example, that would make my life a little bit easier with my particular kitchen right now, when I will probably move into a new place that actually has a microwave, so I'll sell the microwave that I just bought because I literally just today bought a microwave. And then have to sell also the microwave stand because I won't need a microwave stand because it'll probably be built into my like cabinets. So I hate having to get things for just organizational purposes and I will when it's absolutely necessary because obviously sometimes it is necessary but I implore you to not do that because then you're just adding more stuff and stuff that might not be functional across multiple spaces either. Another tip I have and this may be easy to do or may not be easy to do but Find a objective friend if you're really having trouble with certain sentimental things. So find a friend that will be willing to say like, you really do not need that. Or if you're really bad with your wardrobe, will be willing to say like, I've never seen you wear that in the three years of our friendship or something like that. So that you have a little bit more of an objective view because if you are a very sentimental person, you might need that help. I am not particularly sentimental and I think some of it comes from the fact that like, all of the stuff that I have is stuff that I've acquired since I've moved out to the East Coast and it's not like family items and also like any gifts if someone were to give me something like my family's not going to come over and see my house all the time to know that it's like missing. You know what I mean? And even if it was me, I'd just be like, I at this point in my like minimalism, you know, not wanting to have a ton of clutter life, I'd be totally willing to say, I really appreciate that gift, but I got rid of it because I like I didn't need it in this space 
and I wanted someone to use it and love it because I know that you gave me that thing out of love or whatever the case may be. I can't really think of an example because I've never had somebody like confront me about getting rid of something and I don't have a lot of gifts that I've gotten from people that I've gotten rid of. Like I don't have like my family and friends always tend to get me very practical things that I ask for. Like we're not a family or a friend group that like just gets things randomly, like we use wish lists, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've never personally had to worry about that. But if you do worry about that, then maybe employing the help of somebody who's going to be more objective. Also, feel free to uh, DM me. I mean, I've been actually thinking about opening up like a decluttering mentor service because I really like helping people declutter. So that might be a future side hustle of mine. If you'd be interested in paying someone, not even necessarily me, a small fee for helping with decluttering, comment down below and just let me know if that's a thing that people are like even willing to do because I totally feel like that's a gift that I could have and that I could bestow to others who need the emotional support of a decluttering friend. But definitely if you feel like really sentimental about certain items, just think of it as like, if you're really not using it, because you know, like when you're going through stuff, like you know what you're not using. And there's a big uh, talk in the like minimalism community, because I watch a lot of like, not a ton, I watch probably like three minimalism devoted channels and I'll sometimes try to find like minimalism podcasts and stuff like that. But there's talk of like decluttering things that are for your fantasy self. So all of us have this idea in our head of like the person that we want to be, whether that's realistic or not, you know, like the person that goes to like yoga every week. So you have this yoga mat, but you've literally never used it before and like stuff like that. Or somebody who is going to start taking like travel photography, but you've never taken a photography class and just stuff that we keep around because we're like, eventually I'll use that. And it can be very freeing to get rid of those items and be like, actually, I'm not going to use this and that's fine. And then either selling it or donating it or giving it to a friend that it's actually going to be helpful for, that is actually like a really, really nice feeling. So like toiletries and makeup sometimes can be given to people and like shelters and stuff like that. And um, that can be really good. And then that makes you like, you know, we as humans can be kind of like selfish beings. So helping other people is actually sort of a selfish thing in, in a way. Like that gives us like feel good endorphins. So our brains actually like it when we do stuff like that. So giving that thing away and being like, it, could this be more useful to someone else? Because right now it's a sunk cost at this point. Like a lot of people also are like, well, I spent money on that thing and I should use it. But like, if you're not using that thing, then you're not going to use that thing and the money's already gone. Same thing is true with like food at a restaurant and you're like, oh, I need to eat this because I spent money on it. Like you already spent money on it. There's not like, it doesn't matter what you do with it now. The money is already gone. So that's just like a lesson for later, like, oh, hey, I always buy, you know, these particular winter boots, but I don't actually like them. I never wear them. So in the future, like, I'm not going to do that anymore. And that's one of the things, too. I feel like with like minimalism or like decluttering, downsizing, whatever the case may be, I feel like you learn a lot about yourself and your particular style, your particular aesthetic. If you're going through like clothing or even like home decor or whatever, like you find out what's important to you. And that's the thing about like minimalism, like it's not about being cheap and I don't necessarily even consider myself a minimalist. Like I, I, I am in certain aspects and I think I'm not in other aspects, but you know, when you start putting that label on things, people start getting really particular with you. So I don't really feel like arguing about that, but I feel like you start to figure out what things you actually want to invest, like time and space in your home and things to, and what things you don't, and that actually kind of like stress you out to have around all the time and stuff like that. And that can be very freeing as well. I have a fairly small wardrobe, but I always have. I haven't really had to worry about clothing declutter a ton. I did and my first big declutter, but even that wasn't as big as like some people's could be. Like I've just never been a huge shopper the way that like I have friends that are like huge shoppers. So that hasn't been a, a huge concern, but I actually like having a small wardrobe. It makes getting ready easy. Everything kind of goes together. Obviously almost all of my clothing is black or gray. So that makes things really easy as well. And I just, I know what I like and I know what things to replace when they like go bad and like, or, you know, are just out of style or whatever the case may be. So it just makes things really easy for me. Having a decluttered kitchen is really nice. That where I only have the things that I use and I go through 
all of my food and like it's I'm not having to worry about like waste or anything I only have like as many dishes as I need and I don't have very many like pots and pans that I don't need to use them I haven't kept all of my like holiday um, like dishware and stuff because I'm not hosting holidays anymore like I used to at the house so I don't need all of those things so I got rid of a lot of them I only have as much silverware as I need so I went out and bought actually like six packs of spoons knives and forks and I got nice ones that I like but instead of buying like a full 82 piece silverware set I just bought a small set because I don't need a ton I don't host things I don't have people over like four people at a time over I have if anything I have one friend over at a time I don't need eight plates I have four I have four bowls I have like three glasses I have two wine glasses you know like I don't have these like full sets of things for my living room and at some point maybe I'll do like a apartment tour if I ever get this place up to exactly what I want which will take a while because I'm on a tighter budget now and I have certain particular things that I want and again I'm trying not to go out and just buy things to fill the space but I'm not having a couch in my living room I'm just having like two comfortable sitting chairs and like I'm getting rid of my coffee table eventually which is just an Ikea coffee table but when I get rid of my coffee table and just have a small side table with like a lamp on it as the space and then it, it's not I'm just not filling up space with like clutter and stuff and it's really really nice I still hang things on the walls I'm not somebody that just like wants a completely stark or anything like that like and some people really like that as far as minimalists I don't I still like having nice things but I just put a lot more thought and care and effort into what I'm buying and don't just rush out to like Target or Ikea and just get everything I think is cute like I really think about what's gonna go here I take measurements I think about if this is going to be something I could probably use long term or if I'm not sure then I don't invest so much money into it and it's just made it so that it's easy to maintain because that's the big thing too is you want to be able to maintain whatever you end up doing as far as the declutter you don't want to then keep buying stuff and refilling that space back up and having to do like more declutter sessions like that's the opposite of what you want to have happen you want to be able to keep on top of it you know keep on top of your kitchen after you declutter it and doing like a first in first out not buying everything that's kind of on sale or whatever and then like never eating it because we all have the same kinds of foods that we eat so getting too adventurous with like i'm gonna try this new food all the time probably isn't a smart idea doing that like one at a time you know like not having a overflowing you know emergency pantry necessarily like that's not something that matters to me it might matter to other people so if you're a minimalist that actually really wants to have like an emergency pantry so be it but yeah those are my big tips try to have some kind of deadline or decide on some kind of deadline for yourself make a game out of it if you can look up other known methods and surround yourself with like minimalism decluttering content I just find that personally really helpful like whenever I'm getting into something whether it's books personal finance decluttering cooking whatever I start to watch like a lot of videos and a lot of like podcasts and stuff like that about that topic because it gets me really jazzed and excited so I feel like and then you get like other tips and stuff for it as well so I feel like that's really helpful finding up another person that can be more objective than you is super helpful not buying things just for organizational purposes or like a only being able to be using that for that space that you're in currently so I'm always thinking in like the long term and then keeping on top of it throughout life from here forward basically because otherwise it's like you did all that decluttering for nothing so I did ask on Twitter if there were any questions people had because people have asked me about because of my like unhauls and decluttering videos to talk about decluttering so I asked if there were any things in particular you guys wanted me to cover so I just want to cover a few of the like particular questions you guys had one of the questions is how to declutter with a person partner parent who has thing attachment issues so decluttering with another person um, who might not share your same need to declutter can be really hard so if you are wanting to declutter and you're not having to help another person declutter then it's really important to just stick to your stuff and that can suck you can try to get them in on it but I feel like trying to be forceful with it backfires I definitely tried to get my former partner to be on board with like the KonMari thing with like the whole house and they eventually were but at the beginning they got really angry and really resistant even though I wasn't being super pushy or anything 
but I just was like, hey, like check this thing out, see if you like it, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like if you talk about your own fitness and people feel like you're judging them for not being as healthy as you're being and you're like, I'm just talking about my own thing. It's the same kind of thing. So really, if you are living with like parents or a partner or something and you want to declutter, you really do have to stick to your own stuff. But I find and have found that even with that situation where my partner was very resistant to it at the beginning, they started getting on board and actually started decluttering themselves after a little while when they felt like I wasn't paying attention to their stuff. So then they started doing their own stuff. So I feel like that happens a lot. And I've heard that a lot within like minimalism communities where they're like, you know, I started out and I just kind of left my partner alone into their own devices. And eventually they saw how good it was for me to be getting rid of my stuff, but they started kind of getting rid of their own stuff as well. If you're having to declutter for someone, that is a whole other issue and something that I honestly don't even have like a ton of help for besides the fact that if you like are forced to declutter for someone and they've asked your help, then you kind of just have to pretend that all the stuff is your stuff and go over their head a little bit. Like if they've asked for your help, but then are like, oh no, I don't want to get rid of all this stuff. You have to be like, listen, either you let me just do it or I'm going to do it like behind your back. Like if they have to, if you have to declutter because you're downsizing houses or like someone has passed away and you have to get rid of their stuff because the house needs to go up for sale or whatever the case may be, then you have to kind of like, if you've been given permission to do this thing, you then have to treat the person's stuff as if it is your stuff and do it like you do it. Otherwise, you're just going to be running in circles and wanting to pull your own hair out. So this one, this person has multiple questions I want to break into parts. How did you reorganize your new place compared to your old place? I'm not sure if they're talking about the house versus the two bedroom apartment versus the two bedroom apartment versus here, but I didn't like necessarily reorganize any differently because yeah, I just, I just downsized thing. So the downsizing from the house to the two bedroom apartment was like the most downsizing, obviously. So the move here wasn't super bad because I'd already done a declutter and I knew like I, and I had stayed on top of it. So there were only a few things that are like things that were helpful for that space, but that I didn't need in this space. And also because I was splitting up things that my partner, my former partner was taking versus things that I was taking. Like it was just a little bit different doing it that way because it was like, decluttering things that we both didn't need and then deciding who was getting what like that was the majority so it wasn't really decluttering it was like having to organize people's things and splitting things and then when I got here the big reorganizing situation has been like getting things that were his that like he took and having to get my own a replacement item. So this apartment has been a lot about replacement item furnishings and also making sure that I'm not getting things just for this space because again like I said this space might be temporary because as a renter you just like kind of assume that things are going to be temporary and especially since I've been moving so much lately I'm kind of like all right I don't need to collect a ton of stuff because you never know when situations may change and you need to move or like you get a new job and you gotta go somewhere else or whatever the case may be like who knows I'm, I'm very much in the last five years have become a person that I'm like you never know what life's gonna throw at you don't make concrete plans because you never know what's going to happen like so just don't get too stuck with any particular idea and plan at all is there anything you wish you had done for this new place that you didn't do so far no because i'm still in the process of like moving into it and deciding what i want for it so yeah there's nothing so far that i feel like i should have done that i haven't done i'm just taking it very slow and it's easier around the holidays too and i'm really busy at work so it's nice and not nice in the fact that like I haven't been able to really focus on my place but I kind of want to and get certain things done but it's making me really live in it and I also recommend doing this too if you're moving really live in your space before you go out and get all this like stuff for it because then you don't know what you actually need or this way like I've been living in it for weeks and I'm able to be like okay this thing would be really helpful for me is there anything you threw out that you kind of wish you had kept at this point I can't think of anything and by throwing out I mean like donating giving away selling whatever but I got rid of a lot of like clothing that was too big for me because I've lost weight over the last couple of years so I haven't regretted any of that got rid of a lot of like kitchen stuff and I haven't needed anything. I got rid of a lot of makeup and I actually like my smaller makeup collection. To some people it would still be a pretty big makeup collection, but I don't need all the things that I had and I wasn't using them and I was kind of guilty for not using them. So now I have a smaller collection. It's much easier for me to kind of decide looks and stuff. I feel like it's much more cohesive. So, so far I haven't run into anything that I've really regretted getting rid of. I haven't regretted getting rid of any of the books that I've gotten rid of. 
I haven't gotten rid of any like little tchotchkes or like knickknacks or anything that I've regretted. There's been nothing that I can think of that I've been like sad about. The only things have been like things that I've had to replace that were my partners, obviously. But like that's not the same. Like I didn't really like willingly get rid of that stuff and be like, I'm decluttering this. It was just like that thing's his, this thing's mine, that kind of stuff. So that's been the biggest like pain in the butt. It's been like little things. Like I just got scissors today because I didn't have my own scissors until today. And I kept going to Target and they kept not having any single scissors. And I didn't want to order scissors online. Like I just didn't, I just didn't want to deal with that. So finally today they had a single pair of scissors that I was able to buy. So now I am the proud owner of scissors. So there's a question about downsizing a wardrobe or accessories because they're saying they're bad at getting rid of sentimental tees, totes, scarves, etc. Again, I'm not a super sentimental person and especially not when it comes to clothing. Like I just don't have clothing pieces that I'm really sentimental about. I do find that a lot of people get really sentimental about like event tees or something like that. And I feel like you should have to really think like if I don't wear them, could this be better used somewhere else or repurposing that item. So some people make quilts out of their event t-shirts. Some people make like turn them into cleaning rags. I personally use like a lot of graphic tees and stuff that I've got in like boxes or something for my like hair wraps because I dry my hair by plopping it. So I put it up in like a t-shirt, Google it if you don't know what that is, but I use it for that. So just finding other uses for it. Totes are really good for obviously reusable grocery bags so you can lessen the waste that you have as far as like plastic and grocery stores and stuff like that. So I think repurposing it's a good idea, but then just ultimately like, again, with clothing especially, take it all out of its spot and lay it out, try to get an objective friend if you can, if not, that's fine, and really piece through it and be like, when is the last time that I wore this? Sometimes you can do things like, there's the games of like turning your hangers around, and then you only turn it around to face the other way when you've worn an item, and then after a month, two months, six months, whatever it is that you end up deciding for yourself, then you see the things that you've worn, and you're just like, okay, like really definitively, I do not wear this item, no matter how sentimental it is to me, and could it be serving somebody else better is the way that I think about it. How do you find a good balance between decluttering enough and not decluttering too much? I think that's again like having a deadline and also not overdoing it. So if you're not sentimental at all, I think you can run into this problem, but definitely like it's really about the questions that you ask yourself. Like, do I love this? No, like a can opener, for example. Do I love this can opener? Probably not. But do I use it? Yes. So stuff like that where it's like you have to think about like, do I love this item, but is this item also functional? Does this item serve a purpose? Do I have a replacement for it? So a lot of times when I was going through my wardrobe, there were things that's like, I don't love this item, but I do want something of this item that I do love. So like, then you create a list for yourself where you're like, okay, get a new black t-shirt. And then once you get that new black t-shirt, you rotate out the thing that you don't actually like, but you have a replacement thing and you're not getting rid of all this stuff and then not having anything to wear, for example. Like right now I'm going through and trying to get new sweaters because a lot of my sweaters from last year are too big on me, but I didn't throw out all my sweaters because then I wouldn't have any warm clothing to wear. So you kind of have to do that and just try not to be like too gung-ho. I find that people really don't tend to be too gung-ho though. Like I feel like you really are holding back instead of going overboard. I hear very few stories of people actually getting rid of things that they genuinely miss. And also like with decluttering, one of the rules that I kind of have too that I've started to instill for myself is it's like, is this something that I could easily replace? If you're on the fence about it. And if it's like, yeah, you could replace it. Maybe it won't be the exact same item, but you can replace it. It's a t-shirt, it's a colander for, you know, straining pasta, it's a, whatever. If you can replace it, and especially if you can replace it for like under $25, then just get rid of it. And if you need to replace it, then you need to replace it. And that's a, a learning thing, a learning curve. You're gonna make mistakes, but like ultimately if it's something that's easy to replace, then you'll be fine if you get rid of it. I don't know what lipstick to wear. I think I just wanna wear something cash. So yeah, those are all of my broad thoughts on minimalism and downsizing and how to declutter and stuff like that. If you have any particular topics that you want me to hone in on a little bit more, definitely comment down below and let me know. I will probably do those around Vlogmas if there are like repeating topics that a lot of people are like I wish you would talk about this more or like can you give me tips about this or whatever I'm willing to talk about decluttering and like minimalism and stuff more because it's something I do really like and something that I found really helps my like mental health and my like headspace and stuff just having less 
shit. Like right now I'm not fully unpacked and so there's like clutter and stuff and it's driving me a little bit bonkers. Cause it's like, I just want stuff to have a place and if it's not gonna have a place it needs to leave. So yeah, just finding spots for things and not creating spots for them, but finding spots that are actually useful and functional and make sense for items is something that I like doing. So this is where I bid you farewell. I'm going to do lashes before I start filming my booktube videos, but I don't do lashes on camera anymore because it's too stressful. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.